everybody, uh, Dr. Rick dropping in on you. Hope everybody has had a productive week. Uh, you know what I always say, uh, even if it hasn't gone the way that you want it to, if you're still breathing, you're still in the fight. I'm not going to take a whole bunch of your time today. I'm gonna get right to the point. Um, and the point is pointed. Um, you know uh, the routine. If you like what you see, you hear, click the like button, get the share button, subscribe. If you believe in the work we're doing, pay very close attention to what I'm about to say because this is extremely important. We are at a time like no other. I have spent the last 30 years of my life uh, conducting scientific research, engaging in enigmatic problems, uh, pursuing solutions, uh, standing on the shoulders of some giants like Dr. Amos Wilson, Dr. Naeem Akbar, Dr. Francis Chris Wilson, Wilson, Dr. Neely Fuller Jr., Dr. George DeGraw, Dr. Howard Stevens, uh, Stevenson, and, uh, and uh, uh, number of others uh, for the purpose of expanding understanding, expanding research, uh, and creating and implementing solutions and programs to address the issues that we face. Never at any point have we been at a point at which we are now to where so many of our youth are dying and we seem absolutely hopeless and helpless to do anything about it when the truth is it is within our control to mitigate uh, the frequency of death and much of its causality we have the answers the problem is we don't want to become engaged and involved it's so easy to disconnect at this time and it is in that disconnection that we are opening the gateways to so many nefarious mechanisms and machinations and components that are literally designed to disturb the psyche and the mental health of our children, especially our young black males. I have been writing on this for years. I have put it in books like The Miseducation of Black Youth, Academic Apartheid, The uh, Undoing of the African American Mind, Born in Captivity, Psychopathologies and Legacy of Slavery, among others. And yet, we are still walking around in a daze. Uh, Dr. Cleo Monago calls it a trance, a trauma trance. And being in this trance, we are just half here, half not. Meanwhile, suicide among black males between the ages of 14 and 24 has literally spiked at a rate of 49% over the last five years. Our young girls, ages five to 13, now lead in the statistical category of successful suicides. That's right, young black girls are at the top of the list when it comes to suicide. In that age group of five to 13, uh, then we have another issue. If they're not killing, themse killing themselves, they're killing one another. Either black black male on black male crime or another phenomenon that has gone astronomically through the roof. That's at the partner, uh, uh, intimate partner violence and intimate partner homicide. A young black female between the ages of 15 and 44 is more likely to die from intimate partner violence at the hands of either her current mate or a former mate than all other things except, I believe it's a car accident. And I mean, it's the second leading cause of death. The one person you're supposed to be able to depend upon to make sure you're safe is the person most likely to harm you. Now, what we're not doing is investing in understanding why. And I've told you for a long time, if we don't fix this whole family dynamic thing, if we keep buying into the fact that I don't need a man and forget them women, 
and all the other stuff that both sides are saying while we wage this war that was pushed upon us against one another, we're gonna look up and we're gonna be absolutely irrelevant within a decade and a half. And what does that mean? That means that we won't have any place, any power, any pull. And if you think we're oppressed now, you have no idea what we're headed towards. Black men are being either killed off or herded out the home. Uh, there's a spike in uh, homelessness. Why? Because there's untreated mental issues. M mental issues and, and, and levels of psychosis that if treated, if intervened, can be managed and those people who are suffering with them can be productive citizens within our community. But if left unchecked, will either more than likely lead to death, incarceration, or homelessness. This is the research that we're doing right now. And the goal is to do this research so that we have the means with which not only to highlight the problem, but to create solutions, to also create a verifiable and tangible and empirical argument for better legislation on how to mitigate and intervene in uh, forms of psychosis and mental health uh, disorders with young adult males at this time. There is no means of forced intervention because as an adult they can simply say that there's nothing wrong and I don't want to deal with it and there's nothing you can do. The problem is for them to become involved there has to be someone hurt or they have to hurt themselves. So in other words they have to do something that's going to either get them incarcerated or probably kill themselves and that is unacceptable but that's the current state and no it's not just isolated to black people but we, we got to start at home. Uh, we've got to deal with that and the numbers are astronomical in the shift at what we're looking at. We can no longer make that argument or assessment that black people don't kill themselves. Cause I can tell you right now, we're doing it at an alarming rate and we don't seem to have the answers. We're destroying ourselves also through interracial, I mean, intraracial violence. Uh, we are literally harming each other at a rate that we cannot sustain and we need to deal with that. I am asking you, the course of this weekend, I want to raise a minimum of $10,000 to go directly towards this research that we're doing on mental health in the black community. Not just to sit up and talk about the numbers, to sit up and say, okay, what are viable ways to intervene? What are viable ways to intercede and mitigate uh, these catastrophic uh, numbers? And they're there. The answers are there. But we need it, and we need it for multiple reasons. We have got to become problem solvers. We have to become problem solvers within our own communities. We can not consistently and constantly look to those outside of our communities to come up with the answers to the things that are plaguing us. That's not how we're going to win in this life. So I'm challenging everybody uh, over the next several days we're asking you to give the goal is to raise ten thousand dollars and i know that we can do it whether we do it or not is going to be up to you i know that we can do it the links are in the description box for those who want to give if you uh one of those people who confer prefer to give through cash app the organization has a cash app account the cash app information is also in the description box what I am going to consistently and constantly do is push the envelope for my people. I need you to back me on it. I need you to back me on it. And to the people who have been emailing me and commenting, to the people who have read my books, and uh, to me, I um, just strive to be the best I can possibly be to contribute to the things that we that we need to have some form of contribution in that area. And I'm one person, but I refuse to sit up and use it as an excuse for not giving. So I will continue to fight, but I'm asking you to fight with me. I'm asking you to stand with me. There's, there's always an excuse. There's always a reason not to. There's always a bunch of things. The bottom line is those who get on in this world get on because they contribute those who get on in this world get on because they push through and if we're going to do this as a people we have to do it the, 
you have to do it and we have to be willing to finish what we start and I'm not going to back down I'm not going to give up if you believe in the work I do if you've seen the work if you've benefited from the work and a lot of you have it's time to stand up it's time to back up back it up it's time to do something and there are no excuses there are no excuses it's time to do it. The things that we can do that we want to do that bring no intrinsic value to ourselves or to our families or to our people. And we do it consistently every day. And it's evidenced all through social media. We could definitely get behind a program where black people are actually being helped, especially black youth, black children. Uh, we have so much work to do when it comes to our women and our men. And I am not going to lay down the mantle. So I'm going to challenge you to support me. On that note, look, I'm going to get ready to get out of here. If you believe in what I do, and you believe in the work, and you've seen the work, if not, the link to the organization's uh, website is there. You can go there, and you're going to find a bunch of different things that we're doing. You're going to see a bunch of different programs where we've been in. We do lock-ins with kids. We do a bunch of different things. We're there for families. We feed. We, I mean, it's a bunch of stuff that we do. But at the end, we need these major programs that understand the dynamics that are destroying our community. Uh, to me, feeding is put a, putting a Band-Aid on a bullet wound. Yes, you need to stop the bleeding, but that's not going to stop the death. Ultimately, if you don't deal with what's on the inside and you don't confront it, it's going to consistently be a problem, and that's where we've got to change. On that note, look, I'm out of here. I want to thank you guys for lending me a little bit of your time. Take care. Talk to you soon.